Howdy everybody, Colorado Biker here again and today going for another walk as always. So today's subject is food. The other one of the other essentials that you're going to need. So well you can't live without it. You gotta have food. You can go three minutes without air, three day, uh, three days without water and three weeks without food. You can actually probably go a little bit longer, but you are gonna have to eat. Eventually, you will have to eat. Otherwise, yes, you will die. So, there's different kinds of foods that you can have for prepping. Now, there's what I refer to as short-term and long-term food. Okay, short-term is having an ample supply on hand for enough food that'll last you, say, two weeks to a month. And it's stuff that you regularly eat. It's stuff that you regularly go through. You know, what you have in your pantry, what you have in the cupboards, what you have handy on an everyday basis. Okay, so that's short term. And that's just rotating out of the stock and supply that you normally get, okay? What you regularly eat. Then you have the other category, long term, okay? Long term, quite a bit different. This is stuff that you're gonna store away, stash away, put somewhere that you're going to have in case of an emergency okay and we're talking long term as in six months years 25 years it's going to be shelf stable which means it needs to be able to sit on the shelf and be stable not you know start to rot or decay or you know go bad for years this is the long term stuff so let's uh Let's talk about the long-term stuff. Long-term stuff are the basics, okay? Staples. They're things that you're gonna need, okay? You're gonna need some form of carbohydrate, whether that be rice, um, flour, wheat berries, wheat, you know, the grains. Um, Pasta is a good one. You can do that. That stores for a long damn time, okay? Then you're gonna need a protein source. Now, protein source, it can either be meat, or it can also be a uh, base, uh, not base, sorry. It can be based on uh, legumes or beans. Um, you've, all, you've all heard the things, beans, bullets, and band-aids. Okay, well, this is the beans. Okay, the beans are high in protein, so are legumes, okay? Legumes being peas, dried peas, uh, lentils. Lentils are good for protein. They're better for fiber, but they're good for protein. And then things like chickpeas, okay, or garbanzo beans, as you know them, uh, in the dried form, okay? You like hummus? Well, there's your protein right there, okay? It's a great way to get the uh, garbanzo bean protein is hummus. Um, so, but you can't store hummus because it has sesame butter in it. So don't try and do that long-term unless it's canned and uh, packed properly. So you got your proteins, then you're going to have to have other things, uh, things to go with it, okay? You got beans and rice or wheat berries or grains, okay? Carbohydrates and proteins. You're also going to need fats and oils. Oils for cooking, okay? You're going to need that for cooking up, up what you got, but also some form of fat. Your body does require that you eat some form of fat. So you're going to need some kind of fats, all right? And you want to go with the good ones. Um, animal fats are okay, um, but if you have a diet exclusively on those, they can lead to problems later with uh, cholesterol, things like that. But that's over really long term, okay? That's like lifelong dietary stuff. So you want to do something like olive oil. Olive oil, um, some of the clearer oils are good. Uh, the animal fat that I would recommend is clarified butter, okay, ghee is what it's known in Indian cooking, okay? Ghee is really good. Um, it's just butter that's been clarified. You know, when you melt butter, you get the clear part and then you get that milky stuff. The milky stuff is the water, the salt, and the milk solids, the milk particulates itself. The clear bit is the oil, that's the fat. Ghee lasts forever, okay? Lasts a really long time. You can clarify your own butter. All you gotta do is melt it melt it and then let it sit and they will separate out okay and ghee is a really good form of fat um you can cook with it you can use it for just about everything uh you could even use it 
for medicinal purposes you could use it for everything so that's a really good one olive oil is good but it does tend to go bad after a long time okay so i recommend going with ghee ghee tends to be the best thing the clarified butter that's really good so you're going to need that fat and of course you're going to want sugar some form of sugar everybody's addicted to sugar i can tell you that right now everybody's addicted to some form of sugar so you're going to want some now sugar really doesn't go bad it's uh, anaerobic bacteria in pure sugar bacteria all that won't live in it not unless it gets wet once water gets in there then yeah then bacteria and primarily fungus can get in there and uh you start brewing you start brewing up some stuff so you start the brewing process the fermentation process okay but if the sugar concentration is too high it's still not going to be uh good for anything to grow on long term okay it has to have water um the other one that everybody knows about but for those of you who don't the one that lasts forever is honey honey will literally last hundreds of years if not longer all it does is crystallize turns into a solid block okay um so you're gonna have some sort of some form of sugar um just to sweeten things up you know make life a little more bearable so that's another one that you're gonna want and then finally you're gonna want to go for uh beverages some kind of drink um this is a tough one coffee takes a uh, goes bad pretty quick actually unless you get the unroasted green coffee beans and you're able to vacuum pack them with desiccants and oxygen absorbers um coffee has natural oils in it and those tend to go rancid it takes about 10 years but they do go rancid the best bet for a drink for caffeinated drinks i would say is tea and what I do is I buy loose tea. I buy these big bags of Yorkshire Gold and PG tips, but not the tea bags, the actual loose tea itself. You get a lot more. Um, I get a two kilo bag of PG tips for about $35. That lasts me a year, literally. Well, almost a year, about nine months. So it lasts me a long, long time. And it's good tea. It's really good tea. It's better than that Lipton crap, but Lipton will work. So you're going to want some. Most people are addicted to caffeine. There's today's view. It's nice, clear. Look at that. It's pretty. It's clearing out. It's still a little hazy and foggy. Has been. We got clouds coming through. Little tiny, light, little fluffy flakes every once in a while. But it's starting to clear up pretty good. But it's nice out here. Anyway, so um other drink mixes that you're gonna want to get or other drinks so you got coffee and tea so i suggest getting loose tea that works the best uh the yorkshire gold and the pg tips loose tea has already been bagged in mylar bags um and the i think the yorkshire gold is basically already vacuum sealed all you gotta do is buy it and throw it in with your preps no need to repackage or do any of that business it's good to go as it is so <clears throat> uh, excuse me so um and the other stuff that you can get are drink mix powders i recommend gatorade you're going to want something to bring back your electrolytes okay you want salt potassium and calcium okay these are the things that your muscle uses and stuff that you sweat out so you're going to want to get like gatorade is a good source of that i buy the gatorade powder that's sugar salt potassium and calcium okay and you can also get if you don't want the sugar you can get propel um comes in little individual packets but that's okay it's better than having nothing so those are the things that you're going to want and that'll make drinking everything other than water that'll give you some you know some flavor in there you know you all are going to be hurting for caffeine after a week if you don't have any source of it you get horrible headaches muscle cramps it, causes all sorts of problems so if you're a caffeine junkie like me you're going to need a source and the other things that you're going to need i would say uh, one really important one this goes back to the electrolytes is salt you're going to want salt salt for several reasons okay one culinary you're going to want it for cooking okay another reason is for food preservation okay you can salt you know salt meat things like that and salt just like sugar is anaerobic 
bacteria, all that stuff won't grow on salt. Okay, it just kills everything it comes in contact with. You can also use it medicinally. You can use it for a whole bunch of purposes. So have a good supply of salts on hand. I would go with iodized and non-iodized salt. The non-iodized you want to use for uh, food prep. Well, no, for uh, uh, food preservation, not prep. So the iodized you can use for food preparation. You're about to eat it. But for food preservation, you're going to want to use salt. Okay, and you can also sugar cure things too. You ever hear of a sugar cured ham? There you go. So salt, and then of course you're going to want spices. Something to spice up those plain beans and rice and all the other foods that you have. Now make sure that you're able to seal these good, okay? Seal them up good. You're going to want your basic spices. Things like, oh, uh, let's say pepper, cinnamon, uh, nutmeg, allspice, things like that. If you can get them whole, that's even better. If you can get the whole allspice or the whole uh, nutmeg, those hold a lot better than the stuff that's already been ground. Once it's been ground, it tends to oxidize and lose its flavor and potency. So you don't want to go with that, okay? So, but put some spices aside. Um, other things like paprika, um, other spice blends that have a lot of salt in them stay good for a long time. However, the longer you store them, uh, or the longer that you've been stored them in there in exposure to oxygen, the more of a potency they're gonna lose. So they're not gonna taste as good. Even if they still have some of their flavor, it's still better than nothing. So, but those are the basics on food. Um, you can also look on my website, or you can look on my uh, channel here. I've got a couple videos here on packing food for long-term storage using Mylar bags and oxygen absorbers. So take a look at that and that's just the basics for now. We'll get into this more detail later. So in the meantime, remember, keep on prepping.